With the Marjorie Stoneham Douglas High shooting still looming large, its students in the Capitol lobby for gun controls, the Florida House overwhelmingly passed a measure Wednesday, its sponsor said, aimed at bringing light to the schools. The bill, HB 839, would require all public schools to post the state motto, In God We Trust, in a conspicuous place. Sponsor Representative Kim Daniels, a Jacksonville Democrat who runs her own ministry, said Florida needed the legislation given the goings on in the state. He is not a Republican or a Democrat. He is not black or white, Daniels said. He is the light, and our schools need light in them like never before. She spoke directly of the school shooting and said, It's no secret that the state has gun issues that must be addressed. But the real thing that needs to be addressed are issues of the heart, Daniels said. She mentioned video games as an example, saying children are being trained to become virtual assassins. Things might be getting so bad. Daniels suggested that people will come to realize problems are much larger than politics. We cannot put God in a closet when the issues we face are bigger than us, she said, urging colleagues to back the bill. The bill passed 97 to 10, with the results winning a standing ovation. The Senate has yet to take up a companion bill in any committees. As we have been preaching, ever since President Donald Trump has been on the scene proclaiming to be a religious man, we have been seeing more religious conversations in our political realm. From Al Gore proclaiming that God told him to fight global warming, to Nancy Pelosi claiming that God was dishonored by Trump withdrawing from the Paris Climate Agreement, and to the President himself talking about removing the Johnson Amendment, which put a chokehold on the freedom of speech of the churches. And as expected on May 4, 2017, President Donald Trump signed his Religious Liberty Executive Order, which gave the American churches the freedom to preach political topics from the pulpits without fear of being fined by the IRS. It is as this Washington Post article feared, but as it has been taught for literally decades, that religious laws are indeed coming to America. This is to be expected, as every time the Mark of the Beast is mentioned in the book of Revelation, it is always connected to worship. The Mark of the Beast will be about who and when you worship. Kim Daniels says that because of the moral issues in America, that not only the discussion of guns is necessary, but that the bringing of God back into the schools is necessary. And while it is true that we want the God of the Bible back in people's lives, is this to be done by legislation? Can you force the relationship between God and man? The first four commandments are entirely off limits. But I must ask, will they try to enforce laws that criminalize adultery and infanticide or abortion? Or laws that will punish fornication? Will God be allowed back into schools or back into this nation? The same God who condemns lying? Who teaches us that we must obey the Ten Commandments? Or will it be the father of lies himself? Who will be allowed more entrance into the schools and into the American hearts? The Bible warns us that Satan himself shows up as an angel of light. And we know that as he is also the God of this world... The people of this world will unite under his banner. Their race will not matter. Their party affiliation or lack thereof also will not matter. Because as the Bible says, both small, great, rich, and poor, and free, and bond shall worship the beast and his image, and shall receive the mark in their right hands or in their foreheads. This confederacy that is going to be formed is not of God. Do you remember back in 2015 when gun legislation was also being discussed? When Arizona Senator Sylvia Allen was vilified for suggesting a law that would make church attendance on Sundays mandatory? It says during a committee hearing on Tuesday about legislation which would allow individuals to have permits to carry concealed weapons to bring them into public buildings, Allen declared that she felt the committee should be debating a bill about mandatory church attendance instead of guns. I believe what's happening to our country is that there is a horrible erosion of the soul of America, said Allen. And speaking of the weapons one might use to kill someone, she said, Knives, or you can use whatever, it's the soul that is corrupt. And how we get back to a moral rebirth in this country, I don't know, since we are slowly eroding religion at every opportunity that we have. Uh, probably we should be debating a bill requiring every American to attend a church of their choice on Sunday to see if we can get back to having a more 
Okay, she tried to say moral rebirth there. The article continues to say, She lamented, however, how America has strayed from the Christian culture she was raised in in the 1950s. People prayed. People went to church, she said. I remember on Sundays the stores were closed. The biggest thing is religion was kicked out of our public places, out of our schools. Laws that would enforce Sunday as a common day of rest and worship come from the Roman Catholic religion, and enforcing such laws enforces Catholicism upon all, which is clearly a violation of the First Amendment's Establishment Clause. One can also clearly see that not everyone thinks Sunday is the Christian Sabbath. We should not be trying to do what Poland did recently, who voted to phase out Sunday shopping by 2020 to honor what they call the Lord's Day, and is said to be a move that they used to fight against communism. Isaiah 58.13 says that the Lord's Day is the seventh day, not Sunday, which is the day of Christ's resurrection. Check out my Which Day is the Seventh Day Sabbath video when you get a chance, and you will see historical evidence that Sunday was kept by sun-worshipping pagans who called that day the Lord's Day. Even the first Sunday laws enforced by Constantine was literally done in the name of the sun god. One more thing. Recently I heard about a French baker who was fined for working seven days a week. He was fined $3,700 for refusing to take a day of rest. And while I would absolutely encourage people to keep the true biblical Sabbath, we as mankind, again, have absolutely no ability to enforce any of the first four of God's commandments, because that has to do with the relationship between God and man. The idea of the Seventh-day Sabbath is from the Bible, and if the Bible is not one's foundation, why would they seek to operate on the same mode? That is, why would they not try to say one needs three days of rest, or that one should rest every tenth day, like France tried to do in the French Revolution. Why are they saying one day in seven? Because they're trying to mimic the God of the Bible. Because once people have been conditioned to accept a day of rest each week, they will then enforce Sunday laws and force everyone to worship, not according to the dictates of their conscience, but according to the dictates of state religion. It seems the Dark Ages are once again right around the corner wherein the Roman Catholic religion rules, and soon the Mark of the Beast, which is Sunday Laws, will be enforced in the supposed name of Christ. Sunday Laws are coming. Thank you for watching. God bless. Son of men, behold, they of the house of Israel say, the vision that he seeth is for many days to come, and he prophesieth of the times that are far off. Therefore say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, There shall none of my words be prolonged any more, but the word which I have spoken shall be done, saith the Lord God.